So this is going to be our sword tutorial. We finally get into it. Um, we've already done the steel, silver, and chrome, and iron. We've done a lot of basic metal tutorials. We've already done the basics. We've done the shapes, and we've done lighting, and we've done color. Uh, so now we can get into more advanced, you know, like shapes, more advanced stuff, like chains, sword, armor, tridents, you know, really fun shapes and really fun technical kind of things. This is kind of like one of those advanced tutorials that everyone's kind of been waiting on me to do uh, because like like the basics are cool, the basics are nice, the textures are cool, whatever. But people really, really want like, okay, how do I draw plate mail? How do I draw this and that, you know, a saw? So now we can finally sort of start to get into that. And that's why I started with the basics and all these different things. So to get started, we are going to be using our hard round pressure opacity brush quite a bit, and then the soft round pressure opacity brush a little bit. The hard round pressure opacity brush works like so, and the soft round is as you'd expect. It's just a, a much softer version of that same brush. Most swords are symmetrical, but there's many asymmetrical swords, like scimitars or katanas. You know, those are more asymmetrical swords. We're just gonna focus on the symmetrical sword, which means we're able to cheat. Most programs, Procreate has this as well, by the way, uh, have a form of kaleidoscopic or symmetrical painting tools. We're gonna come up here, this little butterfly, click that, and turn on symmetry vertical. All right, so we're gonna do a more realistic longsword, like Lord of the Rings style, you know? And so with that, we have a little pommel. We get ourselves a little handle here. Now, with the longsword, typically, you'll need enough room for two hands, and then we get our guard shape. Don't worry too, too, too much, about uh, cleanliness just yet, we just got started. We can hold down shift to make a straight line. Just gonna draw it down with our eraser. We're just gonna get a nice little point there. And here is our basic shape. Now let's, let's clean this up just a bit. Let's focus on the hilt, the pommel, the guard a little bit. And we're just working on a silhouette right now. After we do the silhouette, then we'll work on actual details and we'll just use clipping masks for that. As you can see, We've got chat down here uh, because these tutorials are recorded live now. There's our basic, our basic silhouette. And then we're gonna come down here and make a new layer, create a clipping mask. And now we can begin uh, the more fun stuff. We're gonna grab a darker color. So using our hard round brush, we are drawing in the shadow areas. And we're focusing on how this metal is bending and curving. Let's grab some light with pressure, push down more firmly to get more light right in the middle areas. Putting a nice shadow for the guard. And we'll do some blending here in a bit. Now, because it's metal, we need to add variation to the shadows. If you're confused at all, go back and watch my metal tutorial series, or the rest of my metal tutorials. It, it starts from the basics and we work our way up. And it, a lot of it, a lot of it has to do with focusing on how metal reflects light. So you're not too lost. Let's have just some basic design here. I think we should actually make this uh, handle more brass. What do you think? More warm. We'll need more yellows and oranges for this, but right now we're getting the base coat in. Now the light source is coming from up top. No fear. Mm, now we need a little more reddish. So we're focusing with mostly or imagining the light source is coming from the top, coming down, having the bounce of the sun, which means we'll need the dark as well. I'm just gonna have this nice variation. And the brightest parts will be these parts that are sticking out. Remember how we did this on the uh, the steel tutorial? Kind of the same deal. Then we have our cool highlight edged spots and we can do this with yellow as well. Don't need to use white. Uh, trying to resist the urge to use pure white or pure black is really gonna get you a lot farther than you think. Let's increase the saturation a little bit because we're sort of mixing it with gray here. So it'll tend to lower the saturation the more we work with it. Now, one of the reasons I love, love, love the hard round brush is so we can do cool stuff like this very easily, very simply, very, very gently. And you'll see me do that a lot more when we get to the actual blade itself. We're just adding some variation here, making sure that it kind of stands out from the rest because having a cool hilt really does wonders for the overall design, you feel me? Now, I had someone here suggest a ruby in the middle and why not? I mean, we're already here, a good red. We're gonna get a very deep red for the lower facets because the ruby is a cut stone. Then we'll get the deep red on the outside of the ruby as well. But then, 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 then. We're gonna use our polygonal lasso tool. Turn the symmetry off real quick. 
We're gonna grab the edges of these facets and very gently We're gonna brush in a bit of light, pale red, pale, pale red for the ruby. You need dark red for the edges, but pale red, depending on the light source, depending on the light source. Let's get the dark red a little darker. And we're gonna come at with opposite ends. So you'll notice I started from the bottom middle and worked my way up. With this dark one, well, I'm gonna do darkness again for this one, but at this time, it's gonna do opposite. I start with the dark on the top, work our way down. And so by tr by changing the light source of the facets, you'll see, for every facet, you'll make it look more unique. It'll make it look like more like a cut gem. All right, now we can't stay in symmetry forever, but we're gonna go back to symmetry to finish up this handle real quick. Because there's edges here that need to be darker. But when the, the metal bends, you wanna add very dark, high saturation color, right in the corners, right in the creases, because that's like the places light's least likely to be. Just like you can do that as well for the creases above. And let's actually work on the blade itself. For safety's sake, we're going to take this selection away. So we're only gonna select the blade itself. We're gonna take our brush, which gets darker the harder we press it, because we're using a nice dark, cool gray and we're gonna kind of press pretty gentle the entire time but then we're gonna hit kind of harder in two spots uh, a bit here not necessarily the full tip uh, but a bit right after the tip and a bit right after the beginning and just kind of have this nice constant flow if you can but soft brush will do you good if you're if your particular brush doesn't really handle if it's too choppy because some different programs are making it a little extra choppy and it can look kind of funky so we've got those. Now we're gonna get a light source. I don't know, this can be either the light blue or the white or just a lighter gray. I'm gonna use the white for now. And we're gonna cut across this in a direction. Uh, I'm probably gonna go best, best, best. Let's go top left, bottom right. And we're gonna do this actually a few different times, a few different places. But the, the main light source, you want a main, a main beam of light to be like roughly in the middle. Then the, the other ones, you kind of shrink your brush a bit and you're very gentle with it. You're very, very calm, very relaxed. You don't want to press as hard, but you want it to be visible. And you can grab the darker color bit and kind of like get some variation back, have just different beams of light sort of hitting it. You want multiple different light beams kind of coming down uh, because your blade is reflecting many different light sources at this current time. Now we go back to the hard round and then we are able to separate the two edges. Cause right now this, is, this looks like one flat piece of metal, just a single flat blade. It doesn't look like it's got the typical, it doesn't look like it has the typical blade like design, which is, which either, I don't remember what kind of cut this is, but like if you, if someone was pointing the sword directly at you, it would either look like this or like this, but it never looks like that. I shouldn't say never, it, it rarely looks like this. Rarely like that, it's usually like this or like this. So, because it's like one of these two, the light source itself is going to be stronger on one side or the other. Same with diamond cut, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Same with, by the way, uh, the shadows. But if it's flat, like this, you won't see any side variation. It won't be divided down the middle. So let's fix that. We're gonna get a hard round brush again. And we're gonna pick a side. Uh, because we want the light source to be mostly on the top left coming down to the bottom right, the bottom right will be slightly darker. But very gently, with that nice hard edge of the of the hard round brush, you're able to get this nice line. And by holding down shift, you're able to get a nice straight line. We just want to accentuate the shadows in the shadowy area. Now, for the fun part, everyone, everyone without exception loves, we're gonna grab white, we're gonna shrink our brush very, very small, we're gonna find the middle. We're gonna very gently kind of bounce, bounce with the pen up and down. Now there's no fuller here. And a fuller is, if the sword's facing you, uh, it's a groove right down the middle. So it's a fuller's sort of like this right here. Almost like the Batman symbol. <laughs> uh, it's also commonly referred to as the blood groove, uh, but it helps the swords not get stuck inside people or things when you stab them. <laughs> a little bit of technology there for you, kind of grim but this is a weapon we're drawing. <laughs> All right, so let's get our dark color and right down the middle with a nice hard brush, we're gonna find the middle once again and some fullers don't go all the way up, okay? Some don't go all the way to the edge. 
Some stop uh, a quarter way through, a third. Some do go all the way, and some stop actually just, just before the tip, because they kind of like that little weird sharp tip bit. So a lot of the tips of swords will tend to have the fuller groove stop about there, and then they'll have a special cut right near the tip. So you'll notice another groove of line change here. Let's make a selection with our selection tool, and we're just gonna make it a bit darker. So we're blending back and forth on that. Let's actually correct this shape just a bit too. Look at that, we're doing great. We're doing great. If you're following along, fantastic, wonderful, wonderful. Anyway, so now we're gonna, because this groove does this, uh, and the light source is coming here, that means it's gonna hit here, but also, it's gonna hit the edge of this groove here. So let's make that happen, happen. Remember, this is the more realistic sword. We're gonna do a more stylized sword some other time. And let's fix up this handle, because these need to be woven. Now there's a couple different ways to handle the weave. We're gonna turn symmetry off, because we need to handle sort of like a, a crisscross pattern. Uh, there's the braided, which is the X that you'll see frequently, which we could handle with uh, symmetry. Uh, then there's the very typical semi X, it's like this. So let's do that one first. And all you're doing is sort of making this semi X. So like you're making little T's. So instead of an X like this, you're making a T and then this one is a T. And then you, you turn this visually sideways and you make a T like that, you make a T like that. And so this, this intersecting T situation is sort of like the weave, but like both, like both these both work fine. The X and the little T's. So add a light source on the top of the strands, just under the dark line. So one's laying on top of the other. Now we can also, on the bottom section, add just a touch of shadow. And this will help really give the, uh, the three-dimensional aspect of these little strips a little more, a little more oomph. Cool. Look at us go. Look at you go. I'm gonna have a little brighter white right here, gently just a smidge right there because right now it's it's a very dark blade so let's just lighten it up a little bit and they're not going to be perfectly the same because you know these 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 facets are facing slightly different directions slightly lighten the groove this groove gets a bit of light as well look at us go but i'm going to blend these out just a touch by pushing that color in grabbing that color pushing it back down now we have a nice gentle blend you can do this on both sides um I like to have a push in with the highlights. By push in, I mean like getting the dark color just outside the highlights and pushing in just a bit. And they make this nice little sheen look to them. I do that with metal all the time and I don't regret it at all. Nice, 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 excellent. Wonderful, marvelous, marvelous. Now to make it isometric, we're going to copy it. I'm gonna turn the original off just so if we mess it up, we have, we have a little spot to get back to. So we're gonna get our bounding box with a control T in Photoshop. Uh, and if you use the selection tool in Procreate, that works the same way. We're gonna pick a side. I think we're gonna have the sword kind of angled this way. So right now it's very flat. So we're gonna have to fix this up, but we're just gonna get our basic shape in first. And then we can fix up the actual, like the goods, you know, make it all juicy. But we're actually gonna copy this and grab the, the bottom layer. We're gonna drag it down a bit. And this is gonna give it a little bit of depth that we're gonna need when we're recreating the handle specifically. Make a new layer between them. Now we're gonna go in, sort of fill in those gaps. Pretty soon we're gonna have to make a connector. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Still below the main layer, and we're gonna draw some connections. Just meaning that we're not gonna have any floating corners here. <clears throat> now this is just if you wanna convert a solid, like a, a line work, like a flat image. I would suggest if you wanted to do this, you know, like for yourself, you would start with isometric. Uh, but if you if you want to do the conversion thing, you totally can. But just know it's gonna be a little 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 funky. <laughs> We're gonna draw this stuff down a bit because it's closer to us and it's facing us. So the things that are facing us have a little extra showing, which means we can also erase a bit of the other side to sort of trim it up a bit. If you're gonna erase a big chunk like a blade, make sure you're, you line it up, and I like to just drag it off here to the side to line it up with the edge so you can use your shift to get a nice solid erase. Hopefully this is making sense. <laughs> That's my, my, ever, my ever present dream. Now another way we can handle this with certain aspects like this 
handle here. Uh, we can use liquify or warp. Warp works fine too. We use liquify for now. And that's where we're just able to change certain aspects like so. We have a little, little guy right there. We kind of want to push it up a little. I'm going to take the edge and push that down a little. Maybe pull that edge down a bit too for the facet. Nice. So to see the difference, it really kind of makes it stick out a bit. Now let's actually add a bit of a shadow to this. This is extra credit. So don't feel need the, the need to recreate this part. Let's mold that together. Blend this a bit. I don't know. Give me my hard brush. Yes. Sharpness. Sharp. Sharp edges. Yes. Cut. Slice. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? You know what? Real quick, real quick, real quick. I do want to add a bit of extra ching ching. A little bit of this. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, that does it. That's it. Oh, that's it. Yes. Some on the blade itself. Adding some character. Marvelous. Marvelous. Yes, we appreciate the imperfections. I agree. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, that is the more realistic sword. We also have the straight edge here. That is our more realistic sword. Uh, we'll do a more stylized, and this is still technically stylized. We'll do a more stylized sword uh, later down the line. For now though, uh, hopefully this is useful. If you'd like to join us, our lovely stream of fantastic artists and gamers and lovely people. Uh, feel free to join us every Thursday. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons and Twitch subs, because Twitch subs are now involved in this and credits. So thank you all so much. Everyone say goodbye. <laughs>